Hello, my name is Lawrence Chan, and this is a Tofurious tutorial on how to use InDesign templates. Now, I have two templates here, template 1B and 2B. Whichever one you might get or future ones, simply double click it to open up InDesign. So by default, you're going to have your master panes already loaded. But if you don't have this page, simply go to Windows and look up Pages because you're going to need the pages in order to see all of the master slides right here. You can also increase the size of this just so then you can see more and then this is the area where the spreads are going to be where we're going to be inputting all the images. So in the event that you want to let's say put in C master simply drag it in and that's your second spread. So this is your first spread double click it. This is your second spread double click it. You could also screw up, as you can tell, it, uh, it's in sequential order. So let's just say if we were to add an F master as well, just simply drop it in here, and there we go. Now one thing cool about InDesign that Photoshop cannot do is that you can rearrange the order of the pages. So let's just say that I want to move uh, page 2 to page 1. Simply right click or command click and then go to move pages. So it's currently move page 2, so which is page 2. So if you want to move it to before page 1, which will make it first, it automatically moves to the top, as you can tell right there. Now right now I'm going to start inputting some images just to show you how easy it is. And then from there, I'm going to do a quick export um, to show you how the the album would look like. So the very first step is you're going to have to gather all of the images that you desire to use for your album. There are two ways you can do this. You can just put them all into one folder and then push command D or to insert image or to place image I'm sorry and then find the image you want and click open. See now we have a temporary image and you can just drop it in here and there you go. Now, right now it's zoomed all the way in. So if I were to click on it, you can see the actual size. It's really huge. So to it's a shortcut to make it fit into the frame is Command, control, or Command Alt and Shift plus C or Control in the PC's case. And then you can drag and click to frame. Now the wonderful thing about InDesign is that it doesn't use the full computer resources to put the image there. This is only a temporary image. So the actual image is going to use the high resolution during the export only. So if you don't want to use the shortcut keys, go to Object, Fitting, and then you can fill frame proportionally, fill content proportionally, fit frame to content, uh, fit content to frame, center content. These are all wonderful shortcuts you can use. So there are two ways how you can adjust this. One, if you click on it, this selects the frame. If you want to select on the image, you hit the round button. Then you see how it highlights the frame, the image, and it actually extends beyond the frame. So if we were to hit the frame, just click it, and there's no round button. This way we can increase the mask if you desire to. To undo it, Command Z. So if I want to readjust it, I can click on the circle again, fit the frame using my shortcut, position it, click away, and it sets. Now another way how you can do this is to use Adobe Bridge. Now I've already preloaded them, so they're all right here. So just these are just some images I'm going to be using for the album for this template. So let me shrink this a little bit. So instead of having to use Command D or Control D to constantly place the images just by looking. You can see all the images here. So let's just imagine that I want to use this happy image. Drag it onto here, click onto InDesign, and release. Now again, it's zoomed in, so select the image. I'm going to use my shortcut key, and it's set. And let's position it. Perfect. So this is page one. Page one is done. 
So if we were to go to the master slides, let's work on page two. I'm actually sorry, it's slide two. So these are actually currently facing pages. So the one with the flower is page one, the one with the couple is page two. And this is what I consider slide one. So if we were to go to slide two, double click it, and then you have your frames. So let's go back to here. Maybe I'll do a prep shot here. I'll get the ring, drop it into InDesign, click on InDesign, click on the square I want it to be in, select the image, Control Command Shift C to fit. Now it doesn't really fit in there. I probably should have used a better image, but this is just an example. I'm going to drop our shoes in there. Select the design. Select the image. Make it fit. This is the grooms. He's a marine officer. Now if you hold space, it creates this hand which I can drag the page around. And then let's drop this image in there. Make this fit. Okay, now that slide two or spread two is done, let's add on the next spread. Now let's find something that we like. Perhaps K. We'll drop K in there. Now it currently has two master panes. Now you don't have to use every single pane, but you could just use one and then it'll leave the other one blank. It won't actually show the lines or anything. Now however, if you see in the left pane, there is this one break right down the center. This is where the page will spread during album printing. So you don't want to put someone's face there. So in this case, let's just grab a, an image, we'll drop it in there. Make it fit. Now it's going to be right over his eyes. Now we don't want that. So we might either expand it or contract. But the moment you contract, you're going to have some white space. Now it's okay to not have it aligned. You simply have to. Now in this case, you can eyeball it or you can use the guides. It automatically snaps in, as you can tell right there, which will tell you that it's centered. Now in this case, if I just want to keep it like this, I may. Now the cut's going to be going right over his shoulder, which is fine, as long as, in my opinion, it doesn't go over his badges or his eyes. So actually, I'm going to shrink that a little bit more, drag it, lock into the guide, click away, set. Now let's just say that I am completely satisfied with this album right now. I would highly advise you to save it immediately by going to File, Save. This will only save the spread, so it's not actually going to use a lot of memory here. But let's just say I already saved and I'm just going to go quickly to Export. Go to Export or Control or Command E. And then, you can, I'm just going to export to Desktop just for convenience. We're going to call this Jamaica and then click Save. Maximum quality, progressive, which means it's going to go in sequential order, and then resolution, which in normally, in normal situations it's 300 DPI. Some album companies I understand that they use 250 DPI, so be wary of that as well. RGB, just keep that the same, and then export. It's just going to take a moment. Because what's happening is that these are the template frames and they're pulling, they're using temporary images and they're pulling the high res images and placing them inside the panes right now and exporting it into a document. If I'm not mistaken, they're all done. So we have one, two, and three. Let's do a quick preview. Uh, Apple has spacebar, which allows me to do a quick preview like that. There we go. That's slide one or page one and page two. That's slide two, looking nice and slide three. Very nice. And that concludes the tutorial for InDesign.